between these two CDC gaming versus Team Secret. Turn to yeah, as I said, uh, personally for me, I, I love seeing these teams play. Um, Gladly obliged to say that, but it has been a little <laughs> bit. Um, just been a, a little bit too to stale for you. Too stale. Yeah. Wait, how did the coin toss go? So what Secret had first pick game one. Okay, and game so three. first pick has lost both games. So no, far. you you coin flip or? for the first game yep. and opposite side second, and then you coin flip again for the third game. Okay, so I wonder who won this because first back. pick lost two previous games. I imagine Secret team might still have just chose. Chosen I imagine team still choose first pick. Even I don't think that's. Oh, Dyer. Yeah, I think it's just very small sample. Even Dyer is like really good now. I think because of the Roshan and the yeah. offlane. It's bet I think it's better. I think better block. than choosing team, first pick. Team Secret it's also seems to really favor having strats that can control the Roshan. Mm -hmm. Like a, every Five game, they've really they really had control. Their like average match time is much longer than most teams. They play much more towards oh, the late game. So yeah, Roshan yeah. is a lot more important for them. But do you guys think that crafting a team fight composition will be really important Secrets in this matchup between these two teams? Yeah, I mean, so far it, for both game one and two, it was. So I mean, I expect CDC to go for the void again. Like mm -hmm. it's, I don't. I think the previous game was they had the void, but what did they have to go with the void? Yeah, they, they had they the void. The Rubik was the big question mark pick for me because like game one they had Lena Enchantress mm -hmm. and then they go into a Rubik, which doesn't really offer. But don't you think void. it's also because of the core they had with the void? Like they had Weaver and Razor, yeah. who are just meant to win their lanes and not meant to, you know, do well with Ten the chrono. They're just gonna right click outside the chrono. I think they got tempted to get Rubik because there was a tide. Five and then it was hilarious. You, you could see how much disrespect Secret showed towards the Rubik because they picked Enigma yeah. after the Rubik. Like you pick Rubik, doesn't matter. We don't care. We'll take Enigma anyway. It's it's not like Secret. about the black hole. No, I mean, the not. black hole was really good in the game, but it was more of like we wanted to have a jungler that yeah. can transition into a core so that we can actually pressure you in the I game. Mean, you have to always feel like we have to do something because the enemy has one guy jungling. Yeah. And if we don't do anything, we're gonna lose out. They could have won that game without him, by the way. I mean, with that black hole. Really yeah, let's be real though. The Rubik was never gonna get anything anyways. The king gets blink and. He's an Aether Lens, okay. Still, but he was never going to when they have an Enchantress and he yeah. has to play like the hard five support. He like go beyond playing the high far hard five support. He has to be like the sixth remain. position. And you know, he's never gonna make that impact. Okay. Or leave. Is this the same? Oh, the is this same. the same? Yeah, it's the same. Apart from the invoker is different from Team Secret. Yep. Um from game one. They I can't remember what they Game one secret with. banded out in, instead of yeah. the bounty. Uh, in the, did they ban bounty it? was second stage ban in oh. game one. I think this is like similar. This is similar logic to game one. The reason I said they might go for Puck is that obviously worked for them very well in game one. I think it's a solid mid laner, but they do the same thing here, just with Delina. It can go mid, it can play against Invoker, and if they need it, they can swap something else. Oh. So team fight it is. Team yep. Secrets. Yep. They're going back for. Tell me, man, just pick Silence if you see the. I had to say at some point, boys. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I mean, which uh, which even said something about the black hole, and it's really not like the you win but that last Invoker. game. Black Invoker. Invoker. He gets yeah. bad. Who else, too? Too? Who else huh? doesn't get too? Who else doesn't get silent? Makes sad too. I don't think silencer is a bad idea. But I, 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 oh yeah, sorry. Uh, you probably ban tight now. Yeah, but at the same time, when you have uh, invoker, like you, you want supports that have like disable, but you don't want to re just rely on. Okay, yeah, we yeah. have black holes so that I can land my combo. You want something else that you can always constantly have instead of a, a big cooldown like black hole. I mean, it's nice to have silencer against yeah. the void, but then again, you have to realize it's all about having balance as well. No, no, I meant uh, CDEC get silencer. Oh, for CDEC. Yeah. To play against the Enigma black hole and also make a invoker sad. Yeah, it's it's still it's still good, but at the same time, for Chronosphere, like you want to drop that actually can deal instant damage. But like when the Chrono is over, if the Chrono is over and you haven't won the fight. <laughs> You want you win big, then you win during global. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, the backup plan, Winter. Plan A, B, and I'm working on C. And what happens when the Corona misses? Global's not going to miss. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Pilot dies, Mister Two Globals. Reserve I just figured time. someone should respond. So I just said yeah. <laughs> CDC. Um, this is what we talked about. They're stubborn and they're. One dimensional. Yeah, seven and one dimensional. <laughs> that was our con for game. CDC. But then they open up with the exact same draft as game it worked one. Though. I mean, yeah. I'm stick with what works. But they're all, they they're also fast. So what can they pick that's fast? Weaver was pretty fast. Let's see. Yeah. Enchantress, huh? highest move speed. Really? Yeah. Yes. It has the highest move speed in game. He also is fast. <laughs> yeah. Team secrets. Who has the fastest an animation? So like spell Rubik. Camping. Every spell he steals with ult has one millisecond. Is it? 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm derailing this draft. <laughs> oh, there's a draft. Remaining. Continue as you were, Cinderin. No, I th I think CDC just need to be careful not Five to fall into the same trap again. They might feel like, oh, this time we know it went wrong last game. We can pick more team fight and we can fight them head on. I still don't think you fight head on into a lineup with Invoker Enigma Tide. It's just too difficult. Well, are people so. scared of just like playing? Is this the, is this the method? Is this what we're going to see in other games as well? That people just going, let's pick how much team fight we have, or mm -hmm. you know, is like uh, surely Alliance are like, no, let's split push I and be annoying. It's it's gonna be dependent on series. Like every series has their own like because different teams prioritize in picking different heroes. Because everyone is good at different heroes. So I think we'll see a shift between teams. Like every team has their obviously there are gonna be a few heroes that everyone plays. Mm. But there are gonna be a difference in between how the teams run it. Where do you want C D E C to go with this? Couch um, number two. Oh, we can and winter. Number, Your couch, couch number one. Couch oh. number one. Oh I didn't know we have numbers here. I just Ten gave. seconds remaining. I think team fight, like like what we mentioned, like both Five teams will prioritize in a lot of team fight despite Tinder and matching. Oh, you're not gonna be able to fight into Invoker and Enigma and Tide, so maybe the first step is to remove the Tide first, because Tide is really good with his void. And they're taking a long time. Yeah. I'm kinda of most curious to see what aggressive's gonna be playing, because I think that's gonna they decide a lot of how CDC play. They're going to play, like, their timing window is relying on probably him more. So, like, you go to game one, he's playing a Sven and waiting. Like, he played a lot, it was a lot much later timing, but they can also get something more early game centric. The Gyrocopter is out the window, but um, there's kind of other options they can look to go for. And they're going to go for the Clinks here. So, I think this is this is much more early game focused than the Sven, for example, because Clinks doesn't need as many items to yes. to get active. So, I very guess, good synergy with Boy. So, I guess the Slada ban was just because Sphinx is weak against Slada. Yeah, because of the M damage, even though we think that mm. the Tide would fit their lineup better. I think Secret might just pick Tide, but this is a good hero in lane against Tide. Clinks does very well in that matchup one-on-one. Mm -hmm. one. It's still, well, it, it's not going to be, it'd be a two-on-one anyway, so they still have their support Ten open, so they could, yeah. they could either run an Alina there or get like a Witch Door or something, and feel they can zone Five a Tide. Seconds. And yeah, if there's sure. aggressive on Clinks? Yeah. yeah, most likely. Most likely, yeah. I kind of don't want to see them do the time. mid void again <laughs> against the Invoker. Yeah. I think... Then, if you have an Enigma, you need a carry that can do really well against the Void in a straight matchup with just one other support. Uh, we saw Ursa get banned out earlier by, I can't remember which team. Uh, CDC. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's really good against the Void because the Fury Swipes carry over. Yep. And it mm -hmm. gives you really early Roshan potential with Invoker plus Enigma. Hmm. And the Void, like, often becomes so easy when your opponents have Enigma because it's like, there's two heroes there yeah. at most, so... If anything, it should be like a dream offlane game when you see an Enigma. Lion. Lion is probably one of the better solo pick. supports in this situation then. Yeah. If you have to play... Uh, but it's hard to zone Void as Lion though. You, you can't really... Because you don't have anything that's... You have a lot of Disable. You can actually... You do damage and he, he can't really backtrack off it. But you can't really like harass him a lot because you don't have any damage over time. It's I not good just... for the lane, it's good for the game. Yeah, yeah good for the game, yeah. If you just like stack and pull, get level 3, mm -hmm. then you pick some... Carry like Ursa or some thing along those lines that can just burst them down mm -hmm. during the disabled time. It's okay because then the void will just respect. Five seconds. So you basically need a carry that is self-sustainable. You don't really yeah. need the support there in the lane too much. Things like that, anyways. They usually pick Envy a hero that he can just mm -hmm. go and do whatever he wants with. So and for C, that they're probably still deciding whether the Lina should be a support. Here. That's the biggest Stop. question. Or the Lina would be mid, Team so the Stalker would most likely be the position 4 with the Iron Talon. We see there's a lot doing MDL, jungling and getting like, what, minute 21, minute 22 Aghanims for his team. So it gives the Void a lot of vision, and it's, it means that it's easier to actually get the clone they, off. They seem like a really quite scary team here, CDEC. In terms of they get any kind of momentum, it's going to be hard to stop. Yeah, fast pace, they take control of the map, and yeah. they Ten suffocate you because of Night Stalker. Yeah. The Night Stalker synergizes really well with the rest of their heroes because you've got it can give vision to the Void to get a good Cronus hero, leaning to get pickoffs, and you can see the Enigma coming in as well and, with the Black Hole. And I think as well, like even if they are putting fear into Team Secret, sure they've got this nice kind of team fight lineup. They can also kind of pose and just never team fight unless they just want to get ahead and farm the because they actually they have, have like Night Stalker skills yeah. great, Clink's obviously Five amazing, um, Lino as well. So they almost seem a little bit. 
Like they have the late game advantage, would you say, for CDC? Yeah, and it's very multi-dimensional because they can not just team fight but find pickoffs. Like Night yeah. Stalker, Clinks, and Lena. These these heroes can just go off and like two man gank squads find a kill on an invoke who's trying to split push. So it forces Secret to play five man, and then CDC. And then they can, can decide if they want to take the five yeah. man or avoid it. Yeah. Is that okay? Most importantly, vision is so important when you're playing against heroes like Animal Plus Side Hunter. Always wanted to battle how you're going to fight. Like, that's the nice soccer. Really limits the ability to Ten secrets remaining. Really hard for them to fight. I still think it's very, very difficult for CDC to take these fights. Like, I think you're saying they have to pick their fight. At some point, they're going to have to take it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're ready for it. I, Again, I, I've... To me, Night Stalker's biggest weakness is teamfight lineups. If if you can force him to teamfight and you don't get the skirmish set up, it's very, very difficult for Night Stalker Ten to have his remaining. his impact, which, you know, he okay. excels at those smaller fights th throughout the game. I, so how do you want CDC to round off that lineup? I mean... Mm. I think they can't, they can't just allow Secret to farm up a 14-minute Greaves on Enigma again, because yeah. then I think they just lose the game in at 20. They just push them, and CDC can't teamfight. They're not strong enough. I really don't think so. so. Either, again, full full emphasis on the early game, put the Lena mid, get a roaming support with Night Stalker, and put pressure on the lanes, or um, you need man, this really is heavy pubs. split push like you Prophet. Just, you just like, pick a jungle Legion commander and fight Greed with Greed. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that last fight, it's like, I'm not playing support, they've got a jungle. I'm Do you like that Visage as a greedy support? that when the clings roam you can actually this farm. Yeah, this is interesting i think q Prophet plays an amazing and he plays it like very course. different with the arcane boots in mech and they don't really have a, they don't have a mech hero yet so get someone want... so they can push tower themselves early so they can trade even disruptor there so it's just this team fight team they're going fight. for team fight disruptor's really getting into tight oh yeah did they ban team last fight just stuff? team fight yeah it's like never gonna get that yeah, but it's still like Secret still has like the Spectre to round that lineup up, which means more team fight. It's just all about the team team fights that they want to have. Okay, couch number two. You have to agree with each other because uh, game board of that in your four of you. And this is the first series, uh, uh, so you have to agree who's going to take it. And you said Secret at the start. I said Secret. So I don't know. <laughs> have you been swayed to my side yet? Come on, Will. <laughs> Do it. Secret here. I think Secret can actually... I'd be more inclined to switch to your side and try to convince you to go mine. Nice. All right, I, I still think C-Deck is going to you know, have you out there, but... All right. We'll go... Well, now if you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, then yeah. you're right at the start. So yeah, I don't exactly. know where you're So your secret over on yeah. couch number two. Couch number one, Winter. I take take a moment roommate. to talk about it. I trust my roommate. That's all I so you're just saying, I, I decide for this yeah. I think Secret's going I did say CDC going into the series, but I just don't think their drafts in this game and the previous one have been good enough. All right, well, we'll find out. It looks like we are live, so uh, the commentators will take you from here on in. It's Secret versus CDEC for the first series. This is the final game to decide who will win. Okay, guys, indeed, game three between CDEC and Secret. And what a series this, it has been so far. And what, what are you seeing, Andy, already? What's going on? How I die with a smoke break. That All was right. actually so nice. Well, they can find. And I, we were talking about this in the draft. Q on the Disruptor. Is that the answer to what Secret were pulling out in game two with the Tide and the Enigma? It's really good if you can doubt the Tide. Like, most of the time, the way that Secret want to take team fights, they want to be very compact. They want to fight around Black Hole and Ravage. Obviously, they have the. Uh, Spectre Haunt to follow that up. Disruptor is one of the few heroes in the game who can just stop a Tide from casting while he's taking damage. Because Static Storm is an area of effect debuff that's basically applied to you every second or like however many seconds it lasts. Which means that if he gets caught inside of the Kinetic Field in a Static Storm, he can be killed before he ults. Which is a really nice thing to have. Also helps secure the laning phase. Gives him pretty good roam actually. Disruptor and Lena together, uh, like if the Disruptor roams for mid, then you can very easily get a kill with that as well. Thunderstrike, Glimpse, Cage, probably a dead hero. Same thing can be said with the Night Stalker and the Disruptor roaming around together. And plus, the vision that you gain with Night Stalker and the Disruptor during nighttime has great synergy. Because Night Stalker has ridiculous vision once he gets eggs. 
And of course, Envy bringing out the spec for this match. We were talking about potential position ones uh, heroes for the for the guy this game, and spec not necessarily one that we kind of came up with. Why do you feel Secrets felt that this is game for a spec? Well, I think Winter stood up. They they're just doing everything based around the team fight potential. I was thinking more along the lines they might go like a, a Sven or a Lycan just to give them even more push to allow themselves to just go high ground sooner. But if you're winning the game, oh, is that? Look at that. Oh, that is painful. That, is... that oh. Uh, oh. That... As far as the the safe lane hero for this game goes, I think that Spectre is more than okay. It's not that it's a, a. I don't think it's a bad pick. It's just a different mentality. Instead of going for the win, you're guaranteeing that if your lineup functions well during the first 20 to 25 minutes of the game, you're going to be so far ahead that a Spectre is going to seem terrifying to ever try to fight into. And those supports, like the the dis support disruptor, for example, and even a Coralina, actually have a pretty hard time dealing with late game Spectre because the hero's just in your face all the time. You pawn them, it becomes very annoying for you. And the lanes, we've seen them kind of switch around each game, uh, a lot of uh, uh, kind of aggressive trial lanes and such coming out in, in each game one and game two. And now in game three, you're seeing a bit more orthodox misery, he's going to have to deal with his trial lane here on the top lane, now of course on the tide. And, and uh, one thing that we didn't really mention ourselves, but was in game two, we were talking about puppy loss with the black holes, but a lot of it was indeed down to misery's ravage. He, he had quite a game in game two on the tide, and so I'm interested to see if they can go for a repeat performance this game. And we already mentioned the disruptor way of dealing with it. Do you feel that CDC, with their draft and their lineup, they do just have a better overall way of dealing with the playstyle that, that um, Secret went for in game two? Certainly better than the last game. Yeah, yeah the, the the Weaver and the Razor just did nothing during that game. At the laning phase, like 10 minutes in, heroes just don't have enough farm. Like the Weaver needed another item on top of his Lincolns, which could be anywhere from like 3,500 for a Deso to, you know, whatever he would want. Oh, to go misery! For. Oh no! God, I might just catch him out here. Misery was going for a bit of a cheeky farm there on the side ball, but oh no, pays with first blood to the Night Stalker. Oh, I look, oh that's that's got to be painful there. Just a little bit unfortunate. God, I could see him out. That's very nice. He realizes that this lane is much harder for the Tide than the, the previous lane. Like, even though it was Razor versus Tide, Misery ended up doing very well in that matchup, but this time around, it's not going to be so easy for him. And this is one of the things, too, that you can do to punish an Enigma. Like, last game, it really felt the Enigma was one of the saving graces, along with Misery's Tide, as you said, but you can actually do things to punish the greed this time around, which is probably the biggest difference between the two traps. In the previous game, they were just sitting in the lane. They had the Enchantress up there, like Q was just killing Envy over and over, but killing Envy didn't matter. It was more about just stopping the offlaner and the jungler from getting complete and total free farm, but this time they're they're going to be able to punish a little bit harder. Of course, aggressive this time on the Clinks. We saw Envy's Clinks in game two. Didn't have a great start, made, made a great recovery though. This time aggressive is, is getting more than enough space. So we're going to see the power of a Clinks with a, a good start straight off the bat. As you said, yeah, the lane's being kind of compromised because of this Enigma, but uh, at the same time, if you're ever going to compromise your lane for Enigma, I think you'd be quite happy to do it for a Puppy Enigma. Yeah, he's probably... Is there any Enigma better than Puppy? I, I, I don't know if there is, because he's pretty much the guy who's played this hero since God knows when, even back in Dota 1, this was a hero that he was known for, so... He knows the hero in and out, and uh, I'm assuming he realizes he's getting leeched from Rao, because he's not going to go up that ramp, he's going to send that conversions first. But, you know, Garter, he's just doing his thing. He's pretty much acting nice. like a bounty hunter here. Pies going to come in and look for control. They have got, of course, uh, uh, Puppy's coming around for this one. Oh, they're trying to buy some space and time. Talking about time, Delation comes out from XZ. Going to stop the line from being able to control either of them anymore. So Puppy, they did move over. I need to get there in time to follow up. Giving Envy a bit of space down at the bottom. 19 for 4 at the moment on this Spectre. XZ not being too much of an issue for him, but at the same time, XZ is getting a decent amount of last hits on the on the offlane void, of course. And just these little rotations, like forcing reactions out of the supports, making Puppy stop farming. Keep in mind, at this time last game, Puppy was pretty much almost level 6, right? Like, he, he's level 4 right now. He had an extremely uninterrupted jungle in the last, uh, last match. He only went to get, I think it was one bounty rune, and then he, like, auto-attacked a couple of times onto Q's Enchantress, and he went back. So, he's already a little bit behind, where he probably wants to be. And with that in mind, it means that the five man's not going to be as strong. Pi getting chased here. I don't think that Garter can go for this. It's way too deep. I mean, talking about the Puppy Enigma, it was, you know, already with the warding, CDC just putting a lot more emphasis this game on, on just trying to control, keep tabs on the Enigma in his jungle. Because uh, they really realize it is it can be a huge threat for them. But the Mystery House is doing in levels. He has managed to start to find a, a fair bit of XP. He's now level four on the tide. We saw him have a pretty tough time up here at the beginning. Uh, he's finding some stuff, and of course, with that, 
I'm telling he can back off and still find that uh, uh, or far mid lane there is a bit of a wrap round here they're trying to catch out weak but he's ghost warp puppies there as well to help for she back he's gonna be fine with the haste it's actually quite surprising they didn't have dust like Gardo has 500 gold right now he could have easily had dust on him and I think they would have killed him because there was Laguna yeah he definitely should be dead right now a little bit of a misplay here from CDC did he just trade for the no he didn't all right so um not the most successful rotation very very weird, actually, that CDC came to that gank not prepared. Yeah, so now starting to get a bit of damage onto this tier 1 top, as he will continue to push in. Misery has had to go back to base himself, still sitting on that level 4, so I think the, the key ults really on the Enigma and the Tide, of course, aren't going to be coming out at the same speed uh, as in game 2. So nonetheless, we know what Secret can and will hope to do with them. And at this point of the game, the farm still, Spectre, and be on the bottom lane. He is level 6 now, so he can jump into the fights if they do kick off. And I guess, in terms of pickup potential, they are waiting on these ults pretty much from all of the three heroes, the Enigma, the Titan, and the Lion before. We can kind of expect to see them go for any action that the Envy can kind of hop into to get himself involved in the kill. It's going to be really nice, because with the teamfight utility that they have, normally Spectre comes to teamfights anyway. That guy is popping off throwing out that Oh, oh. Move drive by there from Shiki. Laguna blade straight down onto the little lion. And Envy, he's straight into the trees with the Spectral Dagger. Yeah, I think he's going to want to stay there for a little while. Uh, especially with Xe hitting level 6 with the next creep. So we'll have that Chrono as well. So Envy needs to be very careful here at the moment. He's all on his own. Uh, he's going to come back out now. The pings. Coming through as we start to see CDC head themselves towards the mid lane. Maybe going to try again for a bit of action onto Wii. Garda does have the dust this time round. Thing about those types of ganks is when you when you mess up a gank like that on Invoker, like say Wii dies, you know that's a big kill that you just didn't get because you didn't buy dust and there was no reason not to have it because you had the money. So maybe that opportunity to present itself again, like right now, Wii's not going to get ganked. He's just going back. As a little bit, a uh, little bit concerning, but CDC making more rotations here, going towards bottom. Ward's gonna spot him out though, and he knows what's going down here. They really want to try and find Envy, but as you said, they know, and uh, CDC knows. Well, the pings came out. They know that Envy's got the vision. They're gonna try and find him there. The kinetic field, but it's not gonna be the case. Envy's gonna be lucky once again, keeping himself alive, playing it very safely. Envy top lane, aggressive, himself. The cover of the skeleton walk, and that is going to be the level six now on to misery with the next creep wave. This could be when we start to see the game begin to pick up and secret maybe looking to try and find some action. In fact, action could be found against them as Garda comes in, aggressive now reveals himself. Misery, he's got a little horn, and there's your Abbott. He's hit the level six just in time, and there's your turnaround. The earth spike onto Garda, secret catching out CDEC when they were the ones looking for the initiation. Great response there with the Haunt, and Ravage coming online at just the right time. When we talk about preparation, Envy even has dust on him. Like, he knew that they were going to be trying to go for teamfights, and as long as the Ravage comes out and you have Haunt available, your carry is going to be at every single teamfight. The synergy behind this pick is actually way better than even I thought at the very beginning when I saw it first picked. I was like, oh, it's pretty good. But after seeing it in action, you can see here, like, even with the Sunstrike being thrown out, there's just no reaction that's going to be fast enough to stop that. They wanted to go for a kill, they ended up getting two wiped off the map in a matter of seconds, so... I think you're going to be feeling pretty good about that one. And the other thing about their lineup is because they do have Enigma, Roshan is always going to be quite easy. That happens maybe one or two more times, you start losing some powers and... Oh, actually, look at the Chrono, and he will manage to clip Envy, but here comes the TP for Syria. Doesn't look like they'll be here in time. Oh, like, oh maybe it is! Envy! Is he gonna go to need Will? Aggressive gets the final touch in. Will take him down, and now looking to dive onto the Pilot Die. There'll be another TP coming through. Look at the Hex out onto Aggressive. He's gonna back himself out away from the tower. Pilot Die just over the walk around. Now we turns up. Xe losing mana fast. Will be able to get himself out and away in time before Weeha can catch him out here. Still CDC, they want to try and fight. Q moving in with Aggressive Garda and the boys. Xe salving up, going in for the dive, looking for Pilot. Weehar's gonna hide in the sidelines. They'll get the kill on the line. Weehar's still hiding. Now Misery comes through. God is still trying to find Wee. He's hiding in the trees. Should spot him out. He will. They'll throw out a Chaos Meteor, but it doesn't matter. Weehar on his own. He goes down as well. And some um, fantastic aggression just being forced out there off from the side of CDC. Just ready to stand by that tower. And they knew that whatever secret threw in, they didn't have the Ravage, they didn't have the Haunt, and now's the best time for CDC to look for a fight. I would actually like to know if Puppy showed himself on the map beforehand. I, I think he did, actually. And maybe they just saw the fact that he didn't have a teleport scroll and they just wanted to go for the dive, because this was very, 
very aggressive for DST. And as you said, they knew that there was no Ravage on a cooldown. It's not really a hard dive to make when you know that those two spells and very long cooldowns are not going to be available. But also realizing that uh, Puppy probably couldn't come to the team fight either just means that for CDEC, that was a very easy decision to make. And the fact that, of course, they had the Disruptor there, they knew that they could send someone back to base. And of course, as we saw, it was at the time, they just sent Misery straight back. I think even if they kind of kept him there, they could probably maybe even have yeah. found the kill on that as well because he didn't have the Ravage. But making the job a little bit easier, and I'm them to make sure that they got that big kill on Weeha's Invoker. I imagine he, yeah, he did manage to pick up the Midas before he went down and managed to use it because he was very close to having that gold. So if that kill on him came a little bit earlier, that could have been a lot more painful for Secret. DC now leading the game 5 for 2, and uh, it's all going to be down to Puppy. Game 1 we saw a little bit of a rocky start being turned around by the big black hole contribution from Puppy. Let's see if he's going to be able to do it again this game. He's been focusing on farming the Ancients for the time being, Munich. Now, this game's going to be a bit different too because CDC actually have a tremendous amount of damage where it felt like last game they were kind of lacking the damage output in some categories like Weaver doesn't really do that much because he needs a lot of items and Razor is kind of the same because he needs time for Static Link to really start dealing damage for him and bottom lane, Pi. I go in in, Chrono straight up and that's the kill online, the Ravage will come through, it's only going to catch out aggressive but that's the big kill, they'll take the clinks in return. And I get they'll be happy with that one. They, they did cost them the Ravage, but that's a kill on your clinks. That is definitely a worth. And that means that Envy's going to secure his urn now, too. He's going to continue to look to fight. As long as they have one ultimate off cooldown, regardless of whether it's Black Hole or Ravage, I think they're going to continually be looking for, uh, for pressure here. Oh, Puppy. Uh, straight up caught out there by Shiki, but they doesn't quite have the burst to deal with Puppy. Oh, now he turns around. That was the smooth. Lens, man. Backs off. He says, I got this one, guys. Q getting the glimpse back off. We are dropped from Static Storm. Shiki with this double damage just ripping through Secret. He's got himself a double kill. He's with the Axe Smash. With the to force back. Shiki losing some of the damage. The finger coming out to Garda. Garda can get it back to the hug on Poppy with the Iron Lungs. He'll get the kill. It's a two for two. Misery. He'll fall as well, though. Triple kill for Shiki. That double damage pretty much making the fight for CDEC. But Secret, they don't go down without one and take two in return. Man, Misery didn't even pick up the regen. That actually makes it so much worse. Like, it sounds like a small thing, but we'll, we'll get a chance to watch this one more time. Like, Puppy, it looks like he's walking too far away, right? But I, I didn't see he had Aether Lens in his inventory, so I was like, wait, why is he walking away? But all things uh, all things considered, CBC is going to be quite happy with this current of events. And the fact that Shiki doesn't even have to go back to base. Like, he's up to 1,700 gold now for that engagement. I assume he's just going straight for the ghouls. Yeah, yeah he's got the Staff of Wizardry in his inventory. This also opens up a really big opportunity for CDC to go Roche. Like, all tier 1s are dead. This is the point in the game where Secret now have to try to make some kind of counterplay. They have Ravage up in about a minute, and I think Haunt is a little bit less than that yet. It's about 30 That's seconds cool, uh, cooldown difference, so... They, um, they have a little bit of a window here. They want to go for this Roshan. They got a little bit of time, and I think Secret, like, they almost have to contest this, right? Like, they can maybe counter push tier 1 mid, but giving them this kind of advantage this early... When you have the advantage in team fight and you're losing team fights against a team who has better rotations, better way of controlling the map once they are ahead, which definitely are, they're against Night Stalker, you're against Clinks with Disruptor as well. So you can get picked so easily. Now it looks like CDC are going to get away with this. Uh, as you're yeah, saying, they're not going to go. Yeah, they're going to be very happy with this. They do lose the tier 1 mid, but trade that CDC will be more than happy to take. And uh, he's going to go the way of aggressive, and of course now with that he should be very close to Desolator. Yeah, he's just about 300 gold away from picking up the Desolator as well here on the Clinks. The big question is, what do Secret want to do? Is this just a warding smoke, or are they actually looking for a fight? They do have everything up, pretty much. The only thing they're missing is uh, Finger, and to be honest, if they land their ultimates properly, Finger is probably not the most important spell to worry about. Because a Meteor from Wii will like clean up everyone inside of the, the Ravage of the Black Hole at this point. And they're just waiting things out here, and he's gonna show. And he just blatantly broke smoke, so I, I don't think they're looking to fight. They just want to try to uh, try to get something here. And the CDC did also go for that smoke, as we saw in Secrets Jungle. So both teams inadvertently avoiding each other. Uh, it's gonna be the space for Secret to take this tier one top, but the trade is gonna be looked for for by CDC. They'll look for the tier two in the mid lane. Still see some TPs coming back. It's gonna be Puppy leading the way. We'll see if they can find any way to stop this push. And he followed the illusion. And to catch out what Secret are looking for in terms of a jump in. Misery. Another thing that is just coming out right now in the courier. Uh, oh no, it's the drone, sorry. Okay. 
down for that jump shot that we did see of course in the last one. We don't have the initiation, but they do have the horns to lead in. And they will pop it. CDC straight away beginning to scatter. They'll put the spectral dagger onto Shiki. Players one chaos in misery has been silenced up. The Sonic Storm comes out. It's going to be Reno. He's going to get himself out just in time. Got a falling load. Can they get the kill on the right? Can they get rid of that? But the first has the XE. Look at Reno on to three. Aggressive trying to get the damage out of the Ravage. He's there for misery. XE's going to fall as well. Two down on CDC. They've got the ghost. The Hex on to aggressive. The finger's there. Clicks tried to run, trying to hide. He'll go down. That's the Aegis pop. Can see him for a second time. Jermaine around. See if he can save this. But there's going to be no way down. He gets on a lovely live strike. Will bring down Puppy. But they lose aggressive on Klings. So a three for one, including the ages being taken out of the hands of the Clinks. Big fight there for Secret. And well, they didn't even need to use the black hole. The coordination there from CDC wasn't really on point. Like the fight was very split up at the start and we'll get an opportunity to actually watch it. But if you watch what XE does after they start walking up to the side here, like they're all chasing onto the Lena. And then they try to go for a, a spear where basically there's no follow-up damage. Like it hits people behind the tower. Uh, all in all, it, it didn't really work out for them. No one was there to actually deal any damage, and the Static Storm was also dropped in such a defensive way that there w they didn't even have that when the Spear came out. So he, th he throws out a Spear auto-attacks like two or three times with just a Blast in his inventory, and he's like, oh, I don't do any damage on my own. I actually need my team. At that point, it's already over. Secret just uh, a little bit too strong there in that engagement. And he's closing in on his uh, Guardian Greaves as well. He's got the Mech and Arcane's already finished. And once that happens, I'd actually say that the Secret are going to be feeling feeling pretty good. Like that Roshan was supposed to secure CDEC map control for quite a long time. When you're playing with Night Stalker and you have the advantage and it's also going to be nighttime uh, in a couple of minutes, you have full map control. Uh, Secret felt incredibly scared to try to do anything there, but as soon as they see the team spread out, it's just immediately in their favor. I'm going to smoke time on the side of Secret. I think Puppy, he's, he's, we're 17 minutes into the game. I haven't had a chance to really get off a big one here with the black hole, and he, he wants to use it. Lead in here at the moment from Misery Pilot down. We are, looks like they'll find Guard in the jungle, and they'll go for the pick off straight in. No way for the night. Bad at that one. And down. NS, and off the back of that, they'll look for a push themselves in the mid lane. They just lost the tier two about a minute or so ago, and this time they're going to try and take the tier two back. As we can see, Big Ult's coming back off cooldown here from both sides. The question is, can CDC really try and do anything about this? They've got the Static Storm, 15 seconds without the Night Stalker. But eyeing this one up, it's going to be a hefty push to try and stop Shiki moving forward. Got the six sidelines out. XE on the back lines with Aggressive. I think they're aware that something's going on and they're playing this safe. They just send the minions in to push and they themselves keeping themselves away from any kind of danger that CDC might throw at them in defense. It's a little bit scary right now because they, they don't actually know how close the Void is to Blink. XC is at 1500, so he could have Blink anywhere from now in the next, like, you know, three to five minutes, give or take, depending on how quickly he farms. Once they get that, I think that taking a team fight is going to be way easier because as soon as you get that Blink Sphere, you allow the Static Storm to come in almost every single time. And you can even overlap if you want, you know, if you know you're going to get the kills, you just drop it on Misery or Puppy and you just get those kills. And unlike the previous games where we saw that there were heroes who have saves, like uh, when they had the Dazzle before and the OD. This game has no saves for those heroes. So you get a Spear into a Static Storm, they should die pretty much every single time. Top tower is under attack. Top lane. Okay, it's just going to be a bit of a trade here once again. Secret on the tier 2 top. Radiant People already ready with EP back. In the tier 2 here on the bottom. Can they do anything here in time? Misery moving forward. Looks like they may think about fighting. They've got all the ultimates, but at the same time, so does CDC. Three. Being kept back here and guarded now with some of the night time. XE is moving forward. Chrono on to three on the back line. They focus on the puppy. Bring down the Enigma. They found Misery as well on the side. There's two hours now before they can get the ult drop. MB style stuff is the third kill there for CDC. And XE there with the big bonos when his team needs it. And that is the kind of stuff that turns the game on its head. Has this guy actually hit less than three heroes with a Chrono Spear? Like in this entire series? I mean, I know he's played to every single game, but it really feels like he always hits like the perfect spear exactly when they need it. And the coordination there was sick, and he didn't even have Blink. He did that without Blink Dagger. Buyback on Misery. 
Secret, they're gonna try and force this fight here. They're gonna potentially use pilot dies falling low. CDC moving forward, they wanna try and finish up the line. Look at the damage from aggressive ripping through. We only just able to survive. Misery coming in again. He's got his own at the moment. Up he is gonna be back on the pitch now here on the Enigma. Misery moving forward. He wants to find the rabbit. He's gonna find a Garda. Try to TP out straight in front of the Titan. He'll cancel TP up on the night spot. But he's missed back onto Misery. MV now coming in. Jumping straight forward on Scarda with the Spectre Dagger. Looking for the night spot. kill. Will find it. They'll be able to get aggressive here as well. But looks like, yes, they've got the dust. They'll get that one too. Two heroes down on CDC. Did cost the buy back there on the Tide Hunter. Base is defended. Yeah, I think it was worth it. I think. Maybe if Envy was a little bit faster, he might have been able to get a, an extra kill as well. Because his haunt was still going for, I think, one more second. And he might have been able to chase down the Void, who is currently jungling right now. Because he didn't have mana for a, for a time walk. But at the beginning of this fight, you see the static score. Look at that Chrono. And how incredible that Chrono was. Like, three heroes, couple on the edge. It puts Envy in such a bad position as well, that there's just no way that Seeker can take that fight anymore. Like, as soon as your carry's dead, you have no Ravage. There's no salvaging that. Just game. But you can see that they defend pretty much only because they have Glyph, and the Ravage ends up equalizing an otherwise pretty uh, pretty bad fight, but all in all, I would say that CDC dealt a pretty good amount of damage there. As we saw, very nearly got the kill onto the Void as well. The Sunstrike just a little bit off the point there from Weeha. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, Game 3, I kind of expected it after seeing both yep. teams have a pretty strong stellar performance, uh, respectively. Game 1, of course, was CDC, and Game 2 from Secret. Game 3 so far, it'll be a close one, I think. Yeah, this is a, the kind of stuff that you want to see though, right? Like one ga The first game was a little bit stompy, I'll admit, but I, I think it was a little bit of a draft issue. And then the next game, it's kind of like the other way. One team does pretty well, and now it's just an even game. This is like the, the dream best of three series, right? Absolutely. And, uh, so some big items are coming out, as we can see, aggressive. He is going to have that PKB pretty shortly ready for the next fight. Uh, on the Night Stalker, Agonims is uh, just uh, only about 1,000 gold away for Garden. You talked about it earlier, just the synergy of having that vision to disrupt. So the catch out potential is going to be huge. Even just things like sending back heroes that are looking for that initiation with the big ultimates like Puppy's Enigma, like Misery's Tide. Talking about Puppy on the Enigma, that's your Guardian Greaves done. Ready for the next fight as well. It's a really big item for him, mainly because you can just fight yourself. So if the Sucker ever throws a silence on you, you can just pop it off. Obviously, being able to save teammates would be nice too. It's not really super useful at this stage in the game in terms of dealing with burst because Shiki has Agonims. So, level 2 Laguna Blade, 650 pure, plus the rest of the damage that, you know, aggressive and everyone can do. Kind of not really lost all of its potency, but the dispel is very nice and grit. They're looking for an opportunity here. Smoked up, they got the Yule's combo. We actually, as a very interesting spells loaded here. Oh, Hexy is in. Oh, he's in the roast pit. He's going to want to get out, and he will. He's going to pop the horn to get the vision. MP jumping straight forward with the Spectral Dagger. The Gush will be thrown out, but Hexy time walks himself away. This is a fresh go, PKB. Eh? I think CDC want to go. If they go really fast, they might be able to catch this, but they have to be very decisive. They were kind of walking around for a few seconds. Yeah, they've got to get themselves over there quickly, as you said. They know that Horn's down. The rest of the ult's still up for the side of Secret, and Secret themselves, they know that CDC is going to want to look for this one. They're not going to fully commit to the roast at the moment. Are hanging out at the side, scanning out themselves, and now see Forge Spirit, the CDC are jumping in. Looks like CDC are gonna potentially try and start to go for it themselves. Yeah, they can go for this. Black Hole and Ravage are there. CDC, they're gonna be careful with their positioning. Three are in the pit at the moment, and Misery's just gonna jump straight in. Dead Drop the Ravage, you will be bursted down. That is something to pop up, but we can't find the Black Hole. They're finally looking off the line, but it's a double kill for Weeha. This fight going incredibly well for the side of Secret so far. But aggressive pops the BKB for the damage from Envy. It's looking to be enough, but there's the Black Hole. Puppy saves himself, takes down two, bringing in XD, bringing in aggressive. Four dead on CDC, and Secret returns to the pit to clean up Roche and grab themselves the eight. That was very nicely done. Like, they just split them apart again. It seems like every single time they go into a team fight and they're not all coordinated, it's just a disaster. Like, at the beginning of this fight, Ravage comes through, then you pretty much just lose a hero straight away. He has to drop Static Storm in a, a very suboptimal way. And the Laguna was used in a lion, and he ends up trading his own life like a lion for a lean at this stage when that was a wicked six week from Shiki. Uh, look at it, they're just yeah. trying to keep and the Gregoons just at the time, coming out, keeping Puppy alive, and gets off that black hole. We may not have seen as many this game as we saw in game two, and arguably this one is a harder matchup considering the heroes that CDC have got, but still Puppy manages to bring out the big guns just when it's needed. Difference in initiation, really. That, that's what it boils down to. The contrast between the fight and that pit 
and how it opened by just it being a Ravage instead of getting jumped on by a Sphere and a Disruptor ulti, that's going to be how the dynamic goes in an actual team fight. Now, if CDEC get their fight going and actually get ahead and can hold map control with the Night Stalker, then the way the game is played changes a little bit. But as long as it's just Brawl 5 versus 5, Secret are going to have the advantage as long as they don't get caught out by that like gigantic Sphere that XD has been throwing out. In terms of kind of items now for CDs, you saw that, I mean, even with the BKB, aggressive was, you know, once a few of his teammates are down, he just can't do enough on his own. He does need to have someone go in and, and, and get the catch. And I think the one thing that you keep touching up, uh, on about, and uh, I think it's very relevant to the fact that they can't seem to find it, is the fact that these static storms, each and every time, they're having to be thrown out defensively. We've not seen the Disruptor really find a huge catch. It was just Misery Bottom. That was the only time. Because he got a glimpse into a Static Storm that yeah. ended up resulting in him having to buy back. That was when they were defending Bottom. But outside of that, yeah, it's tough. I mean, when you smoke up as a secret or you you know, you want to try to reinitiate and the enemy team doesn't have proper vision, one good ultimate like a Ravage or a Black Hole will be able to fight. You know, just right away. You just don't have a chance to do anything after that and the damage is pretty much already dealt. So in these types of high stress situations, it's it's usually better to try to go for the jump as long as you know who you're going for first. And like Secret want to continue this trend, they're gonna smoke up, go into the enemy woods. Maybe some warding gonna happen here. Probably only has sentries on it right now, so. Oh, oh aggressive! They'll be happy with this. Still sentry gets up into the hex of its time and haunting it as well. There's your dust. Yeah, people will be pulled by aggressive. Maybe look for the turnaround, but the man's just done on MB. Goes out the sun strike on point aggressive. Can he get himself up? Just manages to get himself back up to the high ground. He will live. Oh, I'm not man. quite sure how he got away there, but he, he managed it, Andy. That was actually a really good play and then a misplay at the same time. Like, Pi sees a smoke break. He dropped the sentry. He was a little bit slow. And he throws out a hex and then misses his stun. So he hexed him, missed the stun, and then they run away from Shiki, or not Shiki, um, they run away from aggressive thinking that they're not going to be able to kill him because of BKB, but Sunstrike goes through BKB. So one anger smasher, one auto attacker, anything would have killed him. But they just didn't think they had the damage, so they just walked away. That was, um, pretty lucky. I he's going to be pretty happy with yeah, that. Yeah, he's going to be <laughs> pleased with that. That's all I got. He then continues to be close as ever. Oh yeah, and I'm pretty sure, maybe he didn't have mana actually, maybe Pi didn't have mana for finger, but his finger's still up, which means that they definitely could have killed him. And that kill would have been huge. That opens up racks. Like, there's tier, th tier 3 towers that you can actually hit there. Maybe even force a buyback. So I was going to be smoking for CDC, but the ward was there. I don't know that CDC are on their way up. Yeah, this is really good for Secret. They see it. They're going to do the same thing. Look to uh, try and break it with the Ghost Walk. Yeah. Okay, there oh, okay. it is. Oh, we have it. We know <laughs> you're there, like, boys. Well, we know you're there. We've been bamboozled. Us? No off the point here, because... Gonna play it smart, doesn't go straight into the middle of them all. Puppy, he wants to use that black hole. We are, he's gonna head up and they get the catch out there. The set up misery walking in, Ravage onto three, Sunstrike coming out to Shiki. There's your first kill, the static coming again, getting thrown out. Whoops, that's up, it comes in, it's just like that. We are, he gets himself out, Puppy with the black hole, can't suppress it. He's got the BKB, stopping some of the damage from other, other sources. Now the chrono from XZ does match catch my aggressive says, I've got Guys, no you haven't, you need to get up out of there, son, gush onto XZ, and he's going to get back to base, now comes the horn. XZ time walks back up to triple kill for Weeha as he picks off Garner on the nice talk on the sidelines. Aggressive will keep himself alive, but three dead, he's going to cause a buyback here on the Lina, and then he needs to try and defend this one. And he's a secret, ready to try and break the high ground. So CDC tried to unsuccessfully do this on the bottom lane earlier, let's see if Secret have a bit more success here in the mid lane. And have to shrug the back up in five seconds, but he doesn't have the ultimate. It's gonna be a hard defense for them, of course. Chronos there on cooldown after that last fight. Secret might just get the space to go for this thing. Is he jumping and getting the time dilation onto them all? But with uh, Reeves, Secret's just so tanky with his push, and so they should be able to finish off themselves a, a set of racks in the middle. In fact, they might even try and find some more action. Misery blinks in. Getting the space there for Envy to finish that off and manage to find themselves a set of racks there. Uh, Envy? I was yeah. gonna say, it looked like he just hit there for a second and he just stopped. Okay, but that was a really, really good Ravage for Misery. Like, the timing with the Tornado Lift was perfect. Because it was four points and a cross with, uh, with Aghanim as well. 
So he had to time that absolutely fall and hit the Ravage in the fashion that he did. And also realizing that going for Shiki was the best target. You know, just going for the core right away, blowing him up, resulting in pretty much going for the, the two set of racks that we just saw drop there. So very nicely done from Secret. It, yeah. it seemed a little bit hit or miss for a while. And again, this game boils down to who's had the better initiation thus far. But we also have to not discredit the ward that saw the smoke in the first place. Absolutely. That, that was and key. Just as it was expiring as well. Yeah. Very close. Up. I, I think we've got to mention Weeha. It's not really any news, but this man's pretty good on the Invoker. He is not bad. An absolute game. Not, not bad. Absolutely. Get top of the net worth, eighteen and a half thousand here on the man. And uh, I mean, as you said, Misery following up, but it's got his Weeha with the setups each and every time, and that Misery to blink himself into position, getting his most bounce. Oh, just yeah, casual sun strike there. He's on top of it. That's the ICU. Uh, that's the 8K sun strike. Yeah. But this is a really rough situation now for CDC. The Spectre is kind of getting out of hand. We haven't really talked much about Envy, but he's always been contributing to the fights, you know. He's yeah. been carrying dust. He's always there when he needs to be. And then when he's just off doing his own thing, farming, the rest of his team is pressured in a way that they can't realistically go for him ever. Because every single time he's showing himself on the map somewhere else, you have like Puppy and Misery and everyone else just pushing down a lane and, you know, hitting towers, making CDC respond to them. And if you don't come back, and you only kill one, then, you know, Envy at this stage in the game is probably going to start saving for buyback, so he can just buyback haunt. They want to go for high ground, because that's realistically one of the best ways to break base as Spectre, is just to have two lives, only use your haunt when you buy back to the second. But you basically have an Aegis, it just costs money. Now, what do you think about the sort of things, obviously, with his items? Designers go for the uh, defusal this game aggressive. Um, defusal is actually... I think a bit of an underrated item, mainly because it doesn't have a cooldown. It makes it very easy to dispel things like Hex, for example. If they want to go for uh, Shiki, you can just dispel it. And then if you want to try to chase somebody down, since he doesn't really have a tremendous amount of lockdown outside of just like uh, blowing somebody up in a spear, it's nice to have for chase. And the other thing too is you can just uh, dispel dust. Oh, <laughs> this could be a big day for Horn. There's the vision. They know they're grouped up. They back to themselves away. Envy gets the target. Q, the finger being thrown down onto Garda. Night Stalker going to be the first to pop. Q as well. Two kills there for the side of Secret. They didn't even need the Ravage. They didn't need the Black Hole. Just the Horn to lead in and jumping in with the Diffusal Blade slows coming out from the Spectre. Envy with the control. And now they're just going to go for a second lane of Rax here. They're going to go for the tier 3 CDC with two heroes down, neither with buyback available. Secret on. Oh, oh, running past these sentries. Oh, I fall from Wii. BKB coming out. Griffith trying to turn and fight there with the damage from the Desso. Oh, MV. He's just going to go straight back in. XP kick. Chrono on to Puppy. Press is still hanging around. The video spike from the sideline. Highlight are controlling the boys in the credit. There's your ravage. Oh, to three. Misery. Two dead. It's a double kill for Envy. We are blinking up to the high ground. They'll find themselves a third. Triple kill for Envy on the Spectre. Three heroes dead on CDC for roughly 50 seconds. No buyback. This EG and Secret did it. After what looked like an abysmal game one. Game two, they stepped it up. And game three, they stepped it when CDC did as well. And what a series to start off the tournament. It was a very close game. I honestly say this game could have gone either way. A lot of it just pulled down to, again, just initiation. All right, indeed. There we have it. Secret 2-1 against CDC and back to the panel. Back to the panel. Team Secret clutch out the victory in a 2-1 uh, series. Guys, both, all you guys, yeah, said uh, Secret, right? After the, the draft. After the draft. Me and Winter from the get-go. We believe. Why did you?